as you all know that uh, for anti-thoracic valve surgery, breast surgery or any other surgery that involves thoracic valve, the gold standard is thoracic epidural or thoracic paravertebral block. But with the availability of ultrasound machine, for last two, three years that uh, various investigators have found that uh, we should go for interfacial plane work, especially pectoral and serratus plane work. And these blocks provide very good analgesia. And the risk of neurotherapy, that is associated with thoracic paravertebral block, is quite less. And in fact, that uh, the sympathetic blockade with these blocks is not occurred. But these are very good block for antithoracic wall and breast surgery. And in fact, th this can be alternative to thoracic paravertebral block. What are these blocks? Basically, these are interfascicular pain block. The muscle involved of uh, pectus major muscle, pectus minor, satis anterior, and lattice mid dorsi. In pectoral one block, which is used for in patient with breast expander implant insertion, chest drain, or pace based insertion, we inject the drug between facial pain of pectoral major and pectus minor muscle. In modified pack one block, we inject the drug between pectus minor and satis anterior. That is, we use in in those cases where wide, expected wide excision tumor, or node removal, or mastectomies. And in serratus anterior plane block, it can be used for in patient who are undergone antithoracic valve surgeries. And these blocks can be a very good alternative to more invasive blocks like thoracic parietal block, and provide good analgesia. And especially PAC1 block, it will also provide good muscle relaxation, especially good for in patient with where we insert the implants and expanders. Now, coming to anatomy, coming to anatomy, basically we are concerned with the pectoral nerves, lateral branches of thoracic nerves, that is the lateral division and anterior division, and long thoracic and thoracic nerve. In PEC1 block, we tend to block the lateral and middle pectoral nerve. As you see, that uh, once they exit the axilla, the lateral pectoral nerve traverses between major and binum muscles, and usually is accompanied by pectoral branch of the thoracocranial artery. So you can very well see during scanning that uh, in this interfacial plane, uh, one arterial position can be seen that is the mid pectoral branch of thoracocranial artery. Whereas the middle pectoral nerve that traverses behind the pectoral minor muscle at, at the inferior one third of the pectoral major muscle, it is it comes out of the belly of the muscle and traverses between major and minor muscle. So, if we inject these in this interfascicular plane, this will block the both the nerves. <coughs> Similarly, the fact to block where we inject the drug between plane between minor and surface anterior. If you inject the drug uh, thoracic uh, segment, especially upper thoracic nerves will be blocked or if you inject more say 20 ml, then that will block the nerve to serratus anterior also because the serratus anterior nerve towards over the surface of the uh, serratus anterior muscle. Similarly, if you go more, that will further open the axillary drawer and will tend to block the uh, nerve to lattice mid dorsi. So, these blockages of these muscles can be very beneficial in those patients where you, you need lot of muscle attraction, especially in flap or implant insertion. Those can be used for this. Now, I'm coming to anatomy of uh, thoracic nerve, once they exit, uh, uh, traverse in the inter, uh, in, uh, intercostal groove, at the level of in uh, mid axillary line, they comes out and pierce the certain sentient and be, uh, gives two branches, anti branches, posterior branches. The target of the certain plane block is to block these nerves. Now, this is a, uh, just to Further, uh, this is the anatomy of this. Once it broke, it comes out this certain and external intercostal muscle and divide into anti and posterior branches. And similarly, the rest of the muscle now goes and gives anti branches. These branches are difficult to block with these blocks, but uh, for this, we have to infiltrate at the middle aspect of the chest. Coming to sonar anatomy of son uh, pectoral block, if you place the transducer, just below the clavicle, at the lateral one third of the clavicle, you can see this type of picture. You can very well differentiate different structure starting from supplementary tissue, pectoral muscle, pectus minor muscle, that's a small 
digitation of serratus intimus cell, then you can see the acoustic shadow formed by rib and the pleura. This thing pleura, you can very well see. If you go slide the probe further towards the axilla, towards the anti axilla line, you can see one pulsation between major and minor muscles. This is usually the pectoral branch of the thoracacromal artery. Usually, that now, lateral pectoral nerve is a basically a thick nerve that can be seen lateral to the artery most of the time. This is the scanning sequence I described Robert Blanco. Uh, Robert Blanco is basically the first one to describe this block, pack one block and pack two block. He started the scanning by placing the transducer, he used linear transducer placing just below the clavicle. You can see and the, he angulated the transducer just towards the anterior axial line. You can see the acoustic shadow formed by clavicle just anterior to the clavicle there is a small muscle belly that is subclavian muscle. You can see the major minor and you can see the intercostal, the rib, first rib shadow and start of the center centrum muscle also. They further slide down towards the axial line, you tend to see this type of picture at the level of rib 2, major, minor, then rib shadow, pleura and in between this plane you can see the arterial position and the nerve. Coming to further, he further slide down the transducer towards the axillary line and he tend to see. Here that you can see the muscle balance tend to become decrease, become apneurotic. Similarly, in pectoral minor muscle, it becomes both the clavipectoral fascia forms, another fascia that is a bit, bit thick that is Gerdes fascia or called suspension ligament of the breast. Then you can see small digitation of serratus anterior muscle, you can see rib shadows, rib 3, rib 2. This is the area we tend to block for, tend to use for uh, pack 2 block. We pierce this plane and we inject the drug in this between plane between pack minor and status and tear. Coming to sono technique, after scanning, you can place, you can insert the needle from the uh, supplied end of the transducer and inject. Once you uh, your tip in the plane, you inject the drug and the, the space will expand. Similarly, this is uh, pack to block in single technique, single uh, injection technique, you can use this also. And the drug is between uh, minor and thread center here. There is another technique alternative to that, uh, dis, uh, the technique described by uh, uh, Robert Blanco that is uh, described by Fazardo Perez. He just placed the transfers, transversely just below the little one third of the clavicle. And what picture you can see? You can see the all uh, this muscles, rib shadows, pleura, intercostal space and this, this block is very simple. He, you can see major, minor, serratus anterior, intercostal, external intercostal muscle, then pleura. We insert the needle from middle to little and uh, little simple and safe to conduct. Another block is serratus anterior plane block. We block, we inject the drug between plane between pectoral major and minor and some of the investigator inject the drug just below the belly of the serratus anterior muscle. This is the picture if you place the transducer just perpendicular to the just at the level of rib 3 or rib 4. You can see the subcutaneous tissue only one muscle balance can be seen that is serratus anterior. There is no other muscle at this area except serratus anterior. You can see that uh, acoustic shadow produced by rib, then pleura, the intercostal space. If you inject the drug here between extra intercostal muscle and serratus anterior, that will be and some of the prominent block give the half of the drug in this plane just entry to thus above the belly of serratus anterior and below the belly of serratus anterior. Some of the uh, investigators decide a block, they inject the drug, they further go posteriorly and 
another muscle will come in the because that is latissimus dorsi and if we inject the drug between these two planes latissimus dorsi and serratus and dia this will also block the and upper and uh, thrust signals and as well as now to serratus and dia if you further use more volume of the drug that will even block the thoracodorsal now because thoracodorsal now also tears in this plane so this block is very useful in those patient we may uh, contemplating on setting implants or expanders this is a sonar technique the drug is being in the plane between the lesser dorsi and serratus and dorsi you can see the expansion of this similarly there is a uh, competition between fajardo and blanco they come out with each alternative each technique this is another technique described by fajardo uh, for serratus he termed as a serratus intercostal plane block he simply put the catheter at the anti axillary line just below the one uh, lateral vent of the clavicle and he you can see this picture coming out all three muscles can be very well seen major minor serratus and dia you can see the rib shadow two ribs the intercostal space even you can see the external intercostal muscle he just goes from medial to lateral and inject the drug in plane between serratus and dia and external intercostal muscle and it's a, he claim it's very effective and the drug spread cephalocaudal and anterior to posterior it's very effective block coming to what should be used you can use tanamel or local anesthetic 0.75 bupropion or ropivocain or in pack to 20 ml can be used and in serratus and dibble paper i use 20 to 30 ml and onset as claimed i wrote blank and that that said onset time is 3 to 13 minutes and with single bolus you can have 6 to 18 hours of uh, effect and uh, you can very well put the catheter to have a continuous infusion and prolonged blood this is a picture given by blanco in one of the paper that the area of sensory block in cases of pack to block you can see the denervated area sens uh, area that depicts sensory loss with pack to block similarly these are the pictures It shows that the sensory loss in cases of thread sensory block block So these blocks are simple block. If even a big day, as a big day, you can easily perform. The only thing you have to know that anatomy of that area, and it's a basically an interfacial block. You don't have to look for neural structure. You don't have to see that uh, you have to around the nerve also. So if you know the anatomy, it's a very simple anatomy. You have to identify the muscles, various muscles, very interfacial planes, and you can very well inject. It's a very simple. As a big day, you can start. and this has been developed in line of uh, another uh, interfacial plane like uh, tap block and rect sheath block it's a simple block thank you